Hello everyone, Sage Jordan here, giving you another Vicky Quickie, this time on Army Model Laws. We might actually have a tough choice this time, so let's get into it. The first law is Peasant Levies, which isn't too bad early game. You have the plus 10% morale loss, that's not great, and the plus 25% landowner's political strength, that can be a little bit rough. But you have plus 25 barracks max levels and plus 25 conscript center max levels. So let's talk about that really quick. So when you take a look at your barracks, you can see here, you can have a different level. So we can have up to 100 right now because we're a professional army, but if you had levies, it'd be 25. And what this does is every level that it goes up, the key thing here is the training rate. You see the plus 40 here for a one given level of a barracks if we go to another area where we have more uh given barracks let's see if we could find one here uh should be here we have uh 25 uh level here and the training rate is going to be much higher it's going to be a thousand and this means how quickly new units or new battalions can be trained which can make a big difference in war uh that between recovery rate is actually pretty strong the other half is conscription centers. Now, these are interesting. You don't have to pay for them when you're not at war. So un until you're ready to actually activate the conscripts, uh, you don't pay for them. So And it doesn't impact anything. However, when you do, then all of a sudden you need to make sure you have the small arms, the artillery ready. And what it'll do is it'll pull from your population. So if you don't have enough peasants, it'll start pulling from other jobs. Uh, you can also end up with a lot of supply shortages, which will then impact all your armies. So as a beginner player, these are a little bit tough to use. I would say if you're a little bit more advanced and you can plan ahead, uh, they're not bad. Back to peasant levies, you can see here. So we're at a plus 25 barracks and plus 25 conscription centers. So not max. The max is 100, as you were seeing before. So again, so this is where it's a little bit less. Uh, but they do have a minus 25% military goods cost. So this could be one reason to keep things around. If your economy can't quite support what you're doing as far as armies go, uh, this could be pretty decent. As well as your conscription rate, which the 2%, that tells you how many people you can actually conscript or how many armies you can have. Next up is Professional Army. I tend to lean towards this almost every playthrough, uh, but I do see another one that I'm eyeing, which now may be a tougher choice for me. Uh, here, the minus 10% morale loss is very good. Uh, the plus 25% armed forces political strength, I don't see as an issue. I don't really have usually uh, any problems with this interest group, so that I think this is okay to have. Uh, the plus 100 barracks max level is great, right? So you get that huge amount of training. Uh, so you can have like one state with 100 level barracks. And it's probably, you know, one of the most powerful things you can have. Uh, plus 50's conscription center level is not bad either. Uh, your conscription rate is low, like I said. So as, as a beginner player, this is a good one to go towards. And like I said, you shouldn't have too many problems with the armed force. Versus, uh, interest group and now on the national militia and just keep in mind right so professional army and national militia are more expensive than peasant levies that minus 25 percent military good is pretty pretty decent it's not bad uh, but national militia is a uh, minus five percent morale loss so it's a little bit uh, uh, less in the morale loss than professional army but here you can really hurt the armed forces so if you are having problems for some reason in their political strength uh, you can go to national militia and this is a, a big swing so they'll lose 25 percent if you're a professional army and then lose another 20 25% on top of it. So this is pretty big. Uh, but your barracks max level is plus five. So your professional army or, you know, the ones that are on call all the time aren't going to be very strong. Your conscription level, though, can go up to 100, which is very high. And your conscription rate is 5%. So this is really, you know, calling to arms. Uh, it says it right there. The standing army is small, but local militias can be activated to defend their homelands. Mass conscription is the last law, and the one that I'm keeping my eye on, I might want to start to use this one. We have a plus 5% morale loss, which isn't a huge deal. You can go to your budget now with the latest patch, and you can pay a little bit more in your military wages to get plus 10% uh, morale recovery or even plus 20%, and that'll definitely negate uh, you know, that negative that you get there. However, uh, the other stuff here is also pretty good. Uh, plus 100 uh, barracks max level and plus 100 conscription centers. So you get the best of both worlds. Uh, and again, it may not happen in the same state. I think the conscription centers uh, get created depending on the amount of population in the area. So uh, still being able to get to that max level, I think, is really good. The plus 4% conscription rate is not as good as national militia, but pretty close. And then you have this, the plus 100% training rate. I think this is very, very strong. Uh, let me know. I'll put it down in the comments below if you guys are using mass conscription. I'm wondering how uh, powerful that plus 100% training rate could be. Like I said, training rate and recovery rate are very powerful. I might have a whole other video on that. Uh, but yeah, I'm thinking I, I may try this one in my next playthrough. If you like this kind of information, hit that like, subscribe, notification button. They're free. And as always, for the swarm.